Well, welcome to worship on this August 9th and the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Good to have all of you here. Um, today's service, again, is uh, thanks to a lot of volunteers and people wanting to, to help out and, again, being thankful for them. If you haven't already, please go to flcbothel.org and uh, download the bulletin there so you can follow along and sing along and read along uh, as the service goes along. Um, with that, we'll enter into our prelude and then we will uh, experience our meditation. And I invite you during the meditation to say the words as they come up on the screen as part of the meditation. Um, and then we'll join in our gathering song, How Firm a Foundation. Thank you. 
foundation, O oh, saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in Christ Jesus the Word. What more can he say than to you he has said, who unto the Savior for refuge have fled? Fear not, I am with you all, be not dismayed, for I am your God and will still give you aid. I'll strengthen you, help you, and cause you to stand upheld by my righteous, omnipotent hand. When through fiery trials your pathway shall lie, my grace all sufficient shall be your supply. The flame shall not hurt you, I only design your dross to consume and your gold to refine. Throughout all their lifetime my people shall prove my sovereign, eternal, unchangeable love. And then when gray hairs shall their temples adorn, like lambs they shall still in thy bosom be born. And now we'll go out to the LaFord household who will lead us in the greeting and the prayer of the day. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair deliver your children from fear, and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Hymn 414, Holy God, We Praise Your Name. This German hymn appeared in a Catholic hymnal requested by Empress Maria Theresa of Austria in 1774. It originally had eight verses. The tune called Grosser Gott, or Great God, is an anonymous tune and was sung at Senator Edward Kennedy's funeral in 2009. Our canticle of praise is Holy God, We Praise Your Name. It is ELW 414. reading is from Luke, the 11th chapter. Jesus said to them, When you pray, say, 
Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, Jeff. And now we'll go to our reading. Um, as uh, you know, we'll, we've just started a four-week series on the Lord's Prayer. Today's the first day, and each week uh, we will reflect on this important prayer in our lives, and we invited uh, four uh, members to be our preachers for the day. Um, and so today we're focusing on the introduction and the first petition. And so I've invited my daughter to help me out here. Um, Hannah, what is the introduction? Our Father in heaven. What is this? With these words, God wants to attract us so that we come to believe he is truly our father and we are truly his children, in order that we may ask him boldly and with complete confidence, just as loving children ask their loving father. So what's the first petition? Hallowed be your name. What is this? It is true that God's name is holy in itself, but we ask in this prayer that it may also become holy in and among us. How does this come about? Whenever the word of God is taught clearly and purely, and we, as God's children, also live holy lives according to it, to this end help us, dear Father in heaven. However, whoever teaches and lives otherwise, then the word of God teaches, dishonors the name of God among us. Perse persevere us from this, Heavenly Father. Yes. Thank you, Hazel. Such a wonderful, wonderful sharing of your gift. And uh, uh, now we'll uh, move along um, to Roger. Roger, did something amazing happen in your family this week? 
Well, yes. Our granddaughter, Gemma, was born on Friday morning around 10 a.m. So thank you all for your thoughts and prayers and congratulations. Appreciate that. Well, this morning, um, I wanted to talk about prayer. And as Pastor Berg mentioned, the next four Sundays uh, today and the next three will be about prayer and, and how we pray. And uh, there are all sorts of prayers that we offer to God. There are the sorry prayers where we say, God, we're sorry. I'm sorry I did that or this. Uh, there are the thank you prayers. There are the prayers that we say for help. Dear God, help that driver in front of me move off the road, or whatever that help prayer may be. And uh, every time we pray, we talk with God. And uh, that's a, a wonderful relationship that we have, that we talk with God. And, and there are um, different tools that the church gives us to learn how to pray. And uh, sometimes it's... Uh, little phrases or words that remind us of how we can put our prayers together. So uh, one that we may have learned in confirmation class is uh, the word acts, which uh, is starts with the letter A for adoration, where um, we thank God for his amazing job that he does in our world and in our life. And uh, we, we thank God that he's with us all the time. Every step we take, 24 hours a day, what an amazing God we have. And uh, the C of the word acts reminds us of confession, where we admit that, yes, God, we are sinful and we make mistakes, and please forgive us for all the times where we sin, where we say things about others that we shouldn't, and do things that we know we shouldn't do. The T in the word acts reminds us of thanksgiving, and uh, how we give thanks to God for all that we have, all the many blessings in our lives. A uh, place to live and a home, to, uh, a home that we have, and uh, our loving family and, and dear friends. And finally, we have the letter S, and um, that stands for supplication. And supplication is a fancy word for uh, the request for asking or. Uh, saying we need something from God. And uh, that could uh, just be all the different needs and wants that we have. So for those of us who've been in the church for a long time, we, we might remember that, the word acts for adore, confess, thanks, and supplication. But uh, sometimes uh, as we move along in our life, we see, hey, there's maybe a different way of doing that. And uh, with is another word to help us put our prayers together. And uh, the W in the word with is uh, real simple. Wow, all the amazing things that God has given us, especially when we're out in the wilderness or in the mountains and the sunset, and we go, wow, God, you have given us a beautiful place here on earth uh, to live. So where we remember the W as W. Uh, I, well, that's the next letter in that word. And uh, we're reminded of saying, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry for those things that I know I shouldn't do, but I do anyways. I'm sorry for messing up and please forgive me. And so I stands for I'm sorry. The T stands for thank you. Yes, we give thanks to God for all that we have, all the many blessings, uh, like a loving family and great friends and everything we have. And then finally, the H in the word with is a reminder of help. God, we need your help. No matter how old we are, uh, no matter 
what our position in life is. God, we still need your help, and others will also need your help. And so uh, today, as we hear how Jesus teaches us to pray, we have other ways to put our prayers together, maybe with the word acts or with, but uh, we give thanks, we confess our sins, um, we remember what an amazing world God has given us, and we have the opportunity to talk and to ask to our loving God. Let's close with a prayer. Please pray with me. Dear God, thank you for being with us, for loving us and caring for us and helping us. Help us to always pray to you, to share with you our thoughts and our needs and our wows. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Roger. And now we'll go out to the Phelps household. Uh, Gordy has agreed to give our word for the day. And so, uh, Gordy, take it away. Thank you. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord's Prayer comes to us directly from the, from the Gospels. It appears in Luke chapter 11, and it also appears in Matthew chapter 6. In our lectionary sessions, we often ask some questions about the passage we're studying. One of the questions we often uh, ask is, how did the people understand these words back in the time they were written? Well, when the Gospels were written, everyone who read or heard them was a convert to Christianity. These were new. Initially, most were Jews, but many others had been converted from pagan religions. Now, to these people, keeping commandments, keeping God's commandments, and being devout followers had been primarily a matter of obeying the laws. People were judged by their actions. What they believed in their heart was much less important. This is especially true of the converts from paganism, who were free to believe anything they wanted to, as long as they correctly observed the rituals. Much of Jesus' preaching revolves around the idea that God actually dwells within us. And what we believe is every bit as important, if not more, than what we are seen to do. In Matthew's account, the prayer is part of the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus includes a couple of admonitions before starting the prayer. First, in verse 5, Jesus talks about not praying aloud in public, where others can observe our piety, but rather praying in private, where our Father, who is in secret, will reward us. Prayer shouldn't be used to show off our eloquence or saintliness. God knows our qualities, and he's the one that really matters. Then in verse six, 7, he warns against heaping up empty phrases, thinking they'll be heard because of the sheer volume of petitions. Because, he says, your father knows what you need before you ask him. God is all-knowing and understands better than we ourselves what we really need. Jesus then says, pray this way. Now, it's interesting that this statement is most often understood as giving us the exact words to use when we pray. However, it may also be understood as giving us an outline or perhaps a list of categories to consider while we are in prayer. God understands our needs, but sometimes the act of articulating them to God may, make, may help us understand them better. So we look at this as an invitation to speak to God, to show our reverence and honor our God, and to ask for God's presence among us. Now, the words of the Lord's Prayer are chosen very carefully, and they're worth examining in some detail, starting with our Father in Heaven. 
As Martin Luther states in the small catechism, God tenderly invites us to believe that he is our true father and we are his true children. So that with all boldness and confidence, we, we may ask him just as dear children ask their dear father. Our, our in our father is there to remind us that we address God as God's people or a family. The word father in the original language translates more literally as something like daddy, which includes the, which indicates the, the close loving family relationship that's intended. We also don't say my father. We pray corporately as we add our voice to those of all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Father is a title we use to express the idea of our creator, our provider, our protector, and our savior, all understood to be included in this sense of father. We should remember that in this sense, father is not a name, but a title. And heaven. We often think of heaven as being a certain location, usually up above the clouds where God resides along with his angels. It might be helpful for us to think of heaven as wherever we are in God's presence with us, before us, beside us, behind us, and within us. Heaven isn't just some place. Heaven is wherever God is. So after addressing God, the first petition we pray is, hallowed be your name. Again, Luther's catechism explains that God's name is holy in itself. But we pray that it may be kept holy among us also. God's name is kept holy when the word of God is taught in its truth and purity and that we live and lead holy lives according to it. We ask God to help us do this, but anyone who teaches or lives contrary to God's word profanes the name of God. We don't typically address our parents or superiors by their names, but by their titles. So we address God as father. God's name, as revealed to Moses, is more precisely rendered as, I was who I was, I am who I am, and I will be who I will be. In the New Testament, as translated from the Greek, it comes out, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. This name seems to be intended to give us cause to think about something that's far larger, far older, far wiser than anything we've ever contemplated. God's name is holy, set apart. God's name is never to be abused or misused by his people. This then sets the stage for the rest of the prayer. When we talk of things that are holy, we often think of holy places, holy things, or sometimes holy people. As I was researching this, I discovered that the first time the word holy appears in the Bible is in Genesis 2, when God set aside the Sabbath. It says, so God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it he rested from all the work he had done in creation. While they were in exile in Babylon, uh, the Israelites found themselves isolated from their homeland and from each other. Their temple had been destroyed. Their priests were scattered. They couldn't worship as a community. There was no place where they could smell the incense being burned or watch the animals being sacrificed or meet with their friends or participate in communal worship. But then they realized that in the observance of the Sabbath, God makes time holy. They found new ways of making the day special, assigning roles for everyone in the family, making new rituals, reciting verses and lighting candles. Scholars tell us that the celebration of the Sabbath in their own homes is what held the Israelites together as a people. This reminded me of our current times, which seem eerily similar. We find that many of us are isolated from our families, from our friends, from our work, 
from our worship lives, and many of the people and activities that we share, that we cherish for making our lives richer and fuller. In our home, when we worship, Beth and I have slightly different approaches. I'm used to standing in front of the congregation and looking out at the faces. So I'm comfortable looking at the Zoom screen because it resembles what I'm used to experiencing. Beth, on the other hand, is typically in the pews looking toward the cross. So now she's usually away from the screen, concentrating on her cross uh, and using her red hymnal when we sing the hymns. We all have our own personal ways of worshiping. And as we pray together, wherever we are, we should think of it as being a holy time. As we learn and study about the Lord's Prayer, we learn how it takes its special place in our catechism, one of the foundations of our faith walks. We learn about who we are, about who God is, about heaven, and about what we call holy. We learn about God's invitation to us to bring our questions, our needs, our griefs, and most of all, our thanks to God's personal attention in the knowledge that we're always being heard. Amen. Amen. Let's show our appreciation. Yeah. Thank you, Gordy. That was awesome. Now we continue with our hymn of the day. Our hymn is, O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past, ELW 632. This hymn was written by one of the greatest hymn writers of the 18th century, Isaac Watts. This hymn paraphrases Psalm 90. In 1714, England was in chaos. There had been a period of religious tolerance, but that freedom to express your views was now threatened. Watts wrote this as a hymn of comfort for England's panicked citizens who were known as dissenters. Paraphrasing Psalm 90, he reminded them that while humans are caught up in the trials and tribulations of current crises, God takes the long view of time.
And now Roger will lead us in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Now we go out to the Wampler household who will lead us in the prayers of intercession. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For your whole church throughout the world, give courage in the midst of storms so that we see and hear God, Jesus calling, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. May we follow Christ wherever he leads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For the well-being of your creation, protect waterways, forests, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help the human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your hand. Help our orcas as they prepare to give birth. Lord, in your mercy, hear your prayer. prayer. For the nations and their leaders, in you, steadfast love and faithfulness meet, and righteousness and peace kiss. May nations in conflict know the peace that is the fruit of justice, and the justice that is the path to peace. Lord, in your mercy. For those who are suffering devastation, we pray for our siblings in Beirut as they recover from an explosion. Encourage national leaders to send appropriate aid. For those reeling from the hurricanes and typhoons, encourage us to reach out with the help that they need. For all who are suffering from COVID-19, lay your healing hand on them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. For those in need, everyone who calls upon your name will be saved. Accompany all who are lonely. Hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish and support those who are frustrated in their search for an affordable place to live or are facing eviction. We pray for the, those suffering this day, Walt Stoll's son and daughter in, daughters-in-law. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our congregation, you have gathered us today as your people, and we thank you for this gift. We pay for those who are new to this community, for students and teachers preparing for a very peculiar new school year, and for those struggling with unexpected hardship. Supply us generously with your grace for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for the saints of the whole church from all times and places and for the saints in our lives and in our community whom you have gathered to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for those prayers. We now enter into our time of offering and announcements. Um, First off, thank you uh, to you as our members um, and friends who have been generous in your giving. Um, and it, again, it keeps us going forward into this uh, strange future that we're uh, heading into. Um, just a reminder that you can go to flcbothell.org, click on donate, and you can give there, or you can write a check and put that in an envelope and mail it in. 
Uh, we do check the mail regularly and make deposits weekly. Um, but uh, another way is to connect your bank account to ours and make a direct deposit. Um, and if you need help in any way, and uh, Kristen Smith is always available to uh, give advice or to direct you in how to do those things. Um, announcements. Um, uh, you heard that we prayed for Walt Stoll's son. Um, he uh, had a heart attack and is uh, in critical condition. So keep uh, them in your prayers. And both daughters are sick. Uh, Daughter-in-laws are sick as well. And so uh, their family is struggling. So please give them prayers. Also, um, just found out that uh, Mona Shogren, um, her infection, um, she has a new infection in her knee. So please offer prayers for her for quick healing and uh, continued uh, movement towards uh, being more uh, free of pain. Um, and that's helpful. And also keep Nancy Davis in your prayers that her healing continues for the work that was done on her legs. Um, Roger, do you have uh, announcements? Yes, thank you. Uh, a reminder to the men of the congregation, uh, this coming Saturday, August 15th at 9 a.m., there'll be another men's breakfast and uh, maybe Gordy will be able to deliver food. Uh, we'll see, he typically cooks for us at the breakfast. We miss that part, Gordy, we miss that a lot. Uh, and then two weeks from today on Sunday, the 23rd, we have another kids time event at 11 a.m. following the worship service, a uh, time to connect and hear a Bible story and how that um, intersects in our life. And, and uh, they're always good fun. So uh, please mark that on your calendar uh, two weeks from today on the 23rd. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. And now Lucy Kay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for uh, uh, donating to our Lutheran World Relief uh, School Kits Fund. It, uh, we have enough funds for the school supplies, but if you'd like to uh, bring, bring in more supplies uh, on your own, the, the bins are set up in the North X. And thank you to 14 people last week that helped to uh, uh, bring in supplies, uh, cut the cord for the school bags and burn the ends so the, knots, uh, the, the cord doesn't come apart. We have um, probably another uh, un unpacking of the school supplies, you know, taking them out of all their wrapping. Uh, on August 28th, it's not on the calendar, but it'll be there shortly. Uh, the 20 or the 30th of August is when we have the stuffing event out in the uh, parking lot, and uh, that'll be fun. It was it was a great success last month, and we all enjoyed uh, seeing each other, social distanced, of course, with masks and all. Uh, and thank you so much. It's just been a wonderful project and I know there's a huge need in Lebanon right now and we got that word a couple of days ago from Lutheran World Relief so um, keep keep it coming thank you thank you and now Susan has an announcement well, I was just hoping you would read what I sent you, Pastor Berg. Um, but a reminder to all of the women uh, here and invite your friends to join us on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, two days from now um, at 7 p.m. And you should have received uh, information about that in um, the last weekly update. And we'll it's make Wednesday, sure that- Wednesday, Susan. What's that? Wednesday. Oh, I lied to you. You have to wait one more day. Thank you, Jackie. Wednesday. Yes. I just wanted it to be on Tuesday. Oh, well. So Wednesday, we'll see you. Um, check your inbox for a Zoom link, and we'll see you then. Thank you, Susan. And, uh, and just a reminder, as Lucy Kay uh, mentioned, um, you can go to uh, Lutheran World Relief's webpage 
and find out there how you can help. But also uh, Lutheran Disaster Response is also a good place to go if you want to help, especially those people affected by the hurricanes and other storms that happen in our area. So, uh, Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Clean water from our taps and the word we read from the Bible, the drink and food placed on our tables, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities, and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. During the four Sundays of August, as we're reflecting upon the petitions of the Lord's Prayer, each Sunday we'll sing the Lord's Prayer. Now receive this blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor ruler, rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation 
will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Our sending song, You Are Holy, is both deep and playful. It enjoys puns, holy, whole, wholeness, evermore, evermore, and highlights paradoxes of the divine nature. God is both distant and near, filling the whole cosmos, yet also dwelling in the human heart. The music, too, is playful with its Latin samba beat. The song was composed by Per Harling, a, church, a, a pastor of the Church of Sweden, as well as a gifted Swedish lyricist and composer. It's one of my favorite hymns. Let's sing it, ELW 525. Music today. Um, thank you to all the people who helped uh, uh, with the worship and the prayers. Uh, it's always a gift. Now go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.